What's up everyone? I'm the Cartoon Physicist and this is Noilist, taking apart the good, the bad and the forgotten of New Millennium. As you can see from the change of scenery, I love books. What, did you think I dedicate my life entirely to TV shows, cartoons and movies? <laughs> well, yeah, I do. But also books. Hell, it's been a dream of mine to become a published author. But once a published author becomes famous, or at least noteworthy, Hollywood gets their claws into them. But still, there are some books out there we would like to see on big screen. As long as executive meddling isn't involved. Excuse me! Uh, according to Internet Reviewer Law 28.6, Section 3, Subsection 5, if you do a video involving a subject matter that falls within the purview of another reviewer, and you have not previously done a crossover with said reviewer, then you must do a crossover in the aforementioned video. Then why didn't say Linkara did a crossover with me on my review of The Tick? Oh, huh. well, I might be the only reviewer that follows these laws to the letter. This is just an excuse to do a crossover, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I've heard worse excuses. This is the top ten books and book series that should be adapted into movies. Why top ten? Because of the whole top eleven thing, now top ten is being unused. Poor little ten. a few ground rules. First off, we don't repeat authors. Otherwise the entire list will just be new gaming books. Secondly, we're not going to include books that have already been adapted into movies or TV shows. If there were good adaptions, well then good for them. We probably don't need any more adaptions of the same thing. If not, then they already got their chance and wasted it. <coughs> Please never mention that movie again. Too late. It's getting what's coming to it in a whole view someday. Thirdly, we share the list. Some of them are my choices. Some of them are yours. And I need to remind all of you out there that this is purely a subjective list. It only involves books that Mike and I have read. It's not an end-all be-all list since everyone loves different books. Before we actually start the list, there are a few honourable mentions. Books and book series that can't be made into movies, but at least into something else. Honourable mentions! The Fangs Enigma Vampire Spy series by Tommy Dombavan. Tommy Dombavan is most known for his juvenile novel series Scream Street, which I really did love as a kid, which has recently been adapted into a stop-motion TV series, even though it hasn't been following the major story arc so far. I think adapting another one of the series into a TV show can be done again. Fang's Enigma is a fun and action-packed novel series that has two things that kids love. Monsters and secret agents. I mean, a vampire spy that's the best combination ever. It would be great as an animated series. Although, I don't think it should match the official illustrations of the novel series. This is just my opinion, but I think the character designs for the animated series should be a lot sleeker to match the secret agent tone. Similar to Young Justice or Generator Rex. Or how about a compromise? Get Tessa Stone to do the character designs. 
Her work is both sleek and astonishingly colourful. And then the TV series will attract the readers of Hannah is not a boy's name. I mean, the webcomic is never going to continue again. What else are they going to do? My second honourable mention is Ron Gulat's Groucho Mark series. He's more known for his sci-fi work, but I know him better for this series about the famed Golden Age era comedian Groucho Marx as an amateur sleuth, most likely inspired by his role in The Big Store. You would think that it wouldn't work at all, that it's too silly for its own good, but it absolutely does work. Groucho Marx is the most like his own screen persona in real life, so he was definitely entertaining the books. But also in real life, he was a very intelligent, avid bookworm. So in this book series, he's actually a very competent detective, able to face off against gangsters, Sherlock Holmes, actor, mobsters, Nazis, and so on. I think it would make a great live action TV series with original stories in between the screenplays based on the books, or at least a mini series entirely based on books, but only under one condition. Make Ron Goulart the head writer, or at least one of the writers. While the series is definitely great, its strongest element is how Ron Goulart wrote Gracho. The dialogue just hits the nail on the head. He didn't take the lazy route and copy and paste Groucho's lines from wiki quotes. All of Groucho's lines are original and all of them sound like they would come out of the real Groucho Marx's mouth. I couldn't think of anyone better who could write Groucho Marx for the TV series. Except for the writers of his movies and Groucho Marx, of course. But since most of you probably don't actually care about the honorable mentions, it's time for the actual list. Number 10. Stephen Fry's Making History would be an awesome movie. The basic plot is that a college student studying World War II and Hitler and the son of a Nazi use a time machine to erase Hitler from history, but it turns out that the alternate history is way worse. A world without Golden Age superheroes, zombie Nazi movies, and Star Wars. Also, a world where the Nazis thrived and nearly wrecked the rest of the world, turning America into a police state. The book does a really good job of being one of those our history might be the better version stories, and shows that even good intentioned ideas can have drastic consequences, which would work amazingly as a movie, since it's the sort of plot that Hollywood seems to like nowadays. Stephen Fry is a great writer, and there is even humor in a story that you'd think would be devoid of it. Plus, it's got a lot of great action that I'd love to see portrayed on the big screen. And the book does half the work for screenwriters, since some of the bits of the book are written in a screenplay format. So, there's some incentive for you, Hollywood. And if anyone out there likes books with Nazis in them, I'd recommend Skins. It's a story about neo-Nazi skinheads taking over the 1980s punk scene as though they were real Nazis back in the day. But you might not want to read it if you don't have a strong stomach, since you can definitely imagine it as a kind of exploitation film. And I just realized we might have talked about Nazis a bit too much. Agreed. Rule number four. No more Nazis. Paperback writer. Number 9. Knights of the Living Trekkies. Let's face it, zombies are back in full force. But not ordinary zombie films like in the 2000s. I'm talking kitsch zombie films. Cooties, Deathgasm, Cockneys vs Zombies, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, all of these movies are way more creative than the ones during the zombie boom of the 2000s. 
having some sort of kitsch element that honor the exploitation films of the past. So why not continue with this new craze by having a zombie outbreak in a Star Trek convention? Written by Kevin David Anderson and published by Quirk Books, which also published Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, this book has what you expect. Humor, horror, and geeky pop culture references. I'm not a fan of Star Trek, but I do like films and such that deconstruct the show and its fandom in humorous ways. Like Galaxy Quest or the Animaniacs episodes that somehow involve Star Trek. So I think this book would make a great movie to watch for horror fans and sci-fi geeks alike. Now, I am a Star Trek fan. And I wholeheartedly agree. It's Star Trek fans mixed with zombies. There's no way you can go wrong with a combo like that. There's even a movie-style trailer of that book. It includes moments that weren't in the book, but very funny moments. Fixed it! They're right behind me, aren't they? I'm not surprised! Are you surprised? I'm not surprised! Oh yeah! The red church eyes! Big effing surprise! Paperback writer! Number 8. In the vein of the last one, I have to suggest John Scalzi's Red Shirts. If anything has the potential to be the next Galaxy Quest, this book is a good contender. It's about a Star Trek-like ship in a Starfleet-like organization, but the Lower Decks crew members, aka the extras, have all figured out the tricks that we usually blame on bad writing. They have a MacGuffin box, and they know if they have two senior crew members and one Lower Decks guy, the Lower Decks guy isn't coming back from the mission. Essentially, they've become genre-savvy, and it's hilarious. Do it up like a Star Trek show, and I swear it'd sell tickets. Really? With the cheap effects and everything? Based on the way it's written, it'd be bad if it didn't have cheap effects. Though, I suppose to make it similar to recent Trek, it would work better with Abrams-esque effects. Fine, cheap effects it is. But don't blame me if it doesn't work on silver screen. They should make this set at least similar to Galaxy Quest. Not too cheap for, in order for it to work in a cinematic film, but cheap enough to still honor the source material. Paperback writer. Number seven. John Green's An Abundance of Catherines. I mean, there's already a Fault in Our Stars movie, a Paper Towns movie, and a Looking for Alaska movie is in the works, and this book is the only one that hasn't had a movie get past the planning stages. Admittedly, I'm more interested in it for completion's sake, since they've already done the others, and it is one of the more forgettable books, but still, it wasn't a bad book, and a lot of it is really interesting, with the main character, Colin, going on a life-changing road trip to find a missing piece of himself after a breakup with his girlfriend. And considering they made Paper Towns, which was my least favorite of his books, into a really, really good movie, I bet they can make this one into a really, really, really good movie. I've never been a fan of John Green. I mean, he's a good writer and a fun person. It's just preference, really. I prefer escapist books over realistic books. I hope he does write fantasy or sci-fi books at some point. Nevertheless, road trip movies are fun to watch. So, if it has a great sense of humor, I'm willing to watch it. Paperback writer! Number 6. Doctor Sleep by Stephen King Five words. A sequel to The Shining. Two more words. Hell yeah. It might be controversial to most of you out there, or maybe even downright blasphemous. A sequel to The Shining? It shouldn't be done! I mean, The Shining is one of Stanley Kubrick's greatest films, and Stanley Kubrick is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. And dead, so a sequel will be out of the question for you. But think of it this way. 
There are a lot of filmmakers out there now who have been influenced by Stanley Kubrick and could make this a great tribute to him. Make what AI couldn't achieve fully, as well as please Stephen King for once. Like Jaco Van Dommel, who has done shots that seem impossible and has a style that would suit a Stanley Kubrick homage. And the plot of the book would work well for a film. It's about a 40-year-old Danny Torrance, now working as an orderly. He finds out he has a half-niece named Abra, who also has psychic powers. They soon find themselves on the run from the True Knot, an immortal tribe that feeds off the psychic powers of children when they torture them. Combine a Stanley Kubrick homage with a fantastical thriller and you get one of the greatest sequels of all time along with Terminator 2, Toy Story 2, Evil Dead 2, and The Empire Strikes Back. I think this is a great idea and I haven't even read the book, which I totally should. And if it doesn't work out, we could end up seeing one of the best Stephen King time reviews from Nostalgia Wing. Number 5. Brad Meltzer's Culpering Trilogy. These are some of the best books that I have ever read. It's political conspiracies, action, adventure, and hands down awesome. They'd have to do it up like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings movies because they can't cut anything out of these movies because every single minute detail in the book is important. It's about a man named Beecher who works for the National Archive getting drawn into political conspiracies involving the president, a childhood friend, and his dead father. It's utterly amazing and something totally deserving of being up on the big screen. Paperback writer. Number 4. The Johans Cabal Series by Jonathan L. Howard a black comedy film tetralogy about a soulless grave robbing, a court book stealing, Faustian deal making, necromancer slash scientist slash snob who has a sword cane. Yes, Mother Smegging, please! The series isn't British, but it definitely seems like one with its dry wit. And I don't mean the dialogue, I mean every single word in this series has an air of dry wit. I haven't read a book series that lets its own sense of humour consume its content entirely since Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That might just work for a book series, but they also have aspects that would absolutely work for its own film series. Like vampires, demons, and frickin' Alephotep. We need more fantasy comedies. And no. I'm not talking about those stupid current spoof films that obnoxiously reference current fantasy films just for the sake of it. I'm talking about a fantasy film series that's also a comedy, a clever comedy. Kind of like how Snatch was a crime film that was also a clever comedy. For once, can we please have a genre mixing comedy that doesn't have to be a cluster of references soul shoutouts, or spoofs of other films? Don't get me wrong, I love the Cornell trilogy. But I want a comedy that's simply based on an original story. Simple and clever. That's all I want. Agreed. It's about time we got more fantasy comedies. I mean, don't get me wrong, serious fantasy dramas are great, but with so many sci-fi and action comedies, Hollywood needs to get more fantasy into the mix. For crying out loud, the last fantasy comedy we had was Nicolas Cage's Sorcerer's Apprentice. I mean, I thought the magic effects in that film were awesome, but still. Paperback writer. Number three, 
Supreme Justice by Max Allen Collins. It's another political thriller, much like Meltzer's trilogy, but on a completely different spectrum. The book is about an ex-secret serviceman who gets embroiled in an investigation into the assassinations of all the Supreme Court justices. There's action, humor, and twists that would make Shyamalan blush. Maybe including Shyamalan in your praises isn't such a good idea. Well, not recent Shyamalan. Sixth Sense Shyamalan. The book manages to make you think, and even I was shocked about who the bad guy was in the end, and I usually figure stuff like that out pretty early on. As a movie, this thing would keep audiences on the edge of their seats for the entire running time. A modern-day Hitchcockian film. I like it. Paperback Writer Number 2. Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman's collaborative masterpiece, Good Omens. Dogma, but British. Make it! Jokes aside, this is another fantasy comedy that just begs to be made. We have an angel and a demon working together to stop the end of the world, biker horsemen of the apocalypse, an antichrist who is actually a very nice little boy, and so on. It's just hilarious and actually has some deep yet sweet commentary on humanity. This just has to be made into a movie, even if it's just to honour the late Terry Patrick. Plus, someone has made a fan title sequence for the non-existent movie that just made me want to see the movie even more. It even includes a mention of Edgar Wright as the director. That is just brilliant. Edgar Wright's sense of humour and editing style, combined with Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman's writing, would make an awesome fantasy comedy. Probably the best. Very well said. Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett made a great team, and that work would make an even better movie. Edgar Wright is just the cherry on top of the cake of awesomeness. Paperback writer. And number one is... The Skullduggery Pleasant series by Derek Landy. Why isn't this a film franchise already? Okay, I'm not a fan of Harry Potter, but something needs to take its place. There have been many attempts to do that, but I think Skullduggery Pleasant is the one. Before Derek Landy became the author of this awesome series, he was a screenwriter, specifically of the films Dead Bodies and Boy Eats Girl. So he knows how to give his films a cinematic quality to them. In fact, he wrote each book as though it were a different film genre. Book 1, Adventure. Book 2, Monster Movies. Book 3, A Whodunit. Book 4, Revenge Movie. Book 5, um, Invasion of the Boy Snatchers. Okay, not a film genre, but still. Book 6, Superhero Movie. Book 7, Sci-Fi. Book 8, War Film. Book 9, Apocalyptic Movie. But he still ensured they all follow their main book genre, Urban Fantasy. This book series alone started my love of Urban Fantasy, and Derek Landy definitely influenced my own writing. He made me more conscious to witty banter. Oh my god, the witty banter! in this is brilliant, clever, cute, hilarious, and badass all at the same time. But as well as being hilarious, it balances the tone out with drama incredibly well. I mean, the last book is influenced by the apocalyptic film genre. What does that tell you? Speaking of badass, everything in this book series is badass. It's like The Matrix, but way less pretentious. The clothes, the names, the characters, the action, the magic. I think most of the female characters are way more badass than the male characters. And that's saying something since most of the male characters are already badass. For Pete's sake, the titular character is a sorcerer, skeleton detective who wears a pinstripe suit, drives a Bentley, and shoots fire out of his hands. What does that tell you? I mean... If this series was made into a film franchise, it would not only beat the Makomori test, but also the Bechdel test 
and the Russo test. And it's Irish. Don't you want to hear badass sorcerers with Irish accents? And the protagonist is a teenage girl who doesn't swoon over a guy during the entire series. Well, she does get at least two love interests, but she's not with them by the end of the book series. Especially considering she killed one of them. What were they talking about? Oh yes, the series as movies. Okay, nine books, nine movies. The protagonist, Valkyrie Kane, grows older in each book. She's 12 in the first book and 18 or older in the last book. So people could easily make these movies in the same way as Harry Potter, not needing to worry about child actors getting older. To tell you the truth, Derek Landy has attempted to make his books into movies at some point. Years ago, he signed a deal with Warner Brothers to make film adaptations of the series. But the first script was passed around and rewritten so much that it just ended up crap. There was a scene where Skullduggery sung Man in the Mirror. Actually, I would like to see that as a fun little post credits scene, but you get the point. Thankfully, Derek Landy backed out and bought the rights back before it was too late. But he's working on some scripts now, and making a movie franchise out of this series still can be done. Derek Landy has finished the series. It's up for the taking. If it's a British production, get Edgar Wright to direct. He's capable of working Derek Landy's humour into the films and can juggle all of the series genres when it comes to style. If it becomes an American production, get Joss Whedon to direct. He has directed films and TV shows with the same genres as the book series before. And you can tell Joss Whedon has influenced Derek Landy's writing when it comes to dialogue. Along with Gilmore Girls, I guess. In other words, make it already! Totally agree. I haven't read the series, but I have heard wonderful things about it. And if it's as good as it sounds, I would totally go see those movies. The genre hopping would also keep the movies from falling to a stale formula, as many series do. Also, I should totally get to reading them. I think that's been in my two-review pile for years now. Just remember to bring tissues. Derek Landy loves to troll his fans by killing off beloved characters. Or put them through excruciating pain. And yet we still love him. Well, everyone still likes George R.R. R. Martin. Maybe readers are just masochists. Even that or authors are sadists. And there we go. A top 10 list of movies we want to see that Hollywood will surely ignore and just choose books that are similar to either Hunger Games or Twilight. God, our world is messed up. Could be worse, they could make a movie out of the gender-reverse Twilight book and repeat the same mistakes that the original ones made. And now we are giving them ideas. Way to keep things to yourself. <sighs> Never mind. I gotta get ready for a special time of the year that everyone has been waiting all year for. The release of the new Star Wars movie! I'm, st I'm still here. Never mind. <laughs>